Good evening and welcome to Now Chat Show. I'm your girl, Kaz Mack, and I um, hope you guys are having a great day. I'll, just bear me one moment. I've just realized i put in the wrong person. I didn't put in my co-host, Tremaine. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> no, <are>. I'm... <laughs> I know. I put sparkling in <laughs> instead. Oh, my gosh. You know when you try to do 10 things at the same time? Yeah. But welcome to Now Chat Show. If you see your first time to the platform, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are super excited. Today, we have part two of the menopause story, My Menopause and Me. And um, before we get started, I just want to big up my homegirl for joining me this evening. Big up yourself, Tremaine, the life. <laughs> Got a oh, life side, Tremaine, the life side, Tremaine, the God, as you look like to call me. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, all right. Let me just think. Tremaine, the God. Right. Yes. Okay, so how are you doing? You're looking amazing, by the way. Listen, thank you so much. But I'm just looking at your lipstick. I'm just like, yes, sir. What color is that? Is it a blue or is it a purpley? It's a purple, my love. It's like a burgundy oh, yeah. purple, you know. I'm really super tired. So they say if you put on a bold lipstick, it will yeah. take away the tiredness. So oh, that's okay. why I've got one. Yeah, yeah okay. so that's why. Yeah, that's nice. People wear red, the classic, but I didn't want to do red. I just wanted to be bold differently, you know. So that's why I've got oh. this lippy on today. Yeah, that's very nice, very so nice. So I'm super excited. Thank you, my dear. So um, before we get started on the show itself, um, just want to make sure if you are catching the replay, if you are joining us live, welcome on board once again. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. And also, can I ask you after the show, if you can kindly just make a comment after mm -hmm. the chat, obviously, because we know all of you guys get into your conversation as throughout the show is going on. After the show, if you could actually just put a little comment, just give some feedback, just say the show was great, great tips, whatever it is, whatever comes to your heart, please just make a comment. Let us know because we are trying to work on a platform. However, we need you to give us feedback so that we can improve. So we would love to hear from you so we know who our community is as well. And um, I also want to mention as well that there is a few upcoming events and we do know that some of you guys, some of you are actually tuning in from the United States of America, from the West Indies, et cetera, internationally. But for those who are in the UK, there is a few events. Uh, there is Zanon Soul Royalty Festival event, which myself and Jenna Rayburn will be um, hosting and that will be on the 4th of December I will share the link and that is a free family event he has it yearly it's amazing they've got some amazing upcoming artists that's going to be performing and they also do have a band I believe the band that's actually going to be playing will be Amy the late Amy Winehouse is um, band and those who oh. don't know about Zalon Zalon yeah Zalon used to be back in singer for um, Amy Winehouse amazing vocal what he's doing this is all about charity fundraising for the homeless so as you guys know we had um Veryl, who was yeah. on a show a few months ago so he's doing it in line with that however he's doing it through music through um through artists and movement etc so do do check that out and that's going to be on the 4th of december and i will leave this information throughout the description and also throughout the conversation. So if you want to buy your free ticket, by all means do so. And also Karen um, Thorpe Reed, who um, has got a event which she, she was on the show with yourself and Iola, I believe that was yes. two weeks ago, was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So she's got an event that's going to be taking place this Friday. So for any um, female entrepreneurs, who wants to, you know, just to basically just um, get some new motivation, uh, network with some individuals who are doing amazing things within the community. This is the event that you do need to check out taking place this coming Friday within the UK. And it's an all day event. And we will share the link with throughout the chat as well, where you can get your VIP ticket, because I believe it's been reduced down to £20 if you are watching on the Now Chat Show platform. And also for those who wants to come out and celebrate with me for my birthday, my Earth Strong next week, Saturday, yeah. TMJ, 
They're having a jeans and denim and sports event. So do get your tickets. Um, the tickets have gone up to £15. Guys, I have been telling you about this from since September. So, boy, but, but, <laughs> there is a but. If you do go down there, instead of paying £20 on the door, just say you're part of Kazmat's booking. Guess what? You pay £15, bro. You don't have to pay the £20 on the door. So yeah. you can use the £5 and buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, oh, boy, there's only one Kazmat boy, only one Kazmat. <laughs> well, actually, there is actually quite a few because I've been trying to um create a Gmail account and it's like Kazmat's already taken, so I have to wow. put that Kazmat underscore one or Kazmat five or no, right. I just want Kazmat, <laughs> so I may have to say Kaz underscore Mac, you know, just to make it official yeah. to me yeah so there's more casmats there's more than there's, well there's only one me but there's more casmats yeah exactly that's my 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 point that there's only one of you that's one thing boy thank god can you imagine if there was more of me <laughs> what do you mean the Even place would be wonderful all this cre creativity and, and jokes but could I just say something Jermaine you're going to have to take over a little bit on the show because you know say it's Wednesday you know what I'm doing in it Yes, bacon, bacon, bacon. Pata cake, pata I'm baking cake. Miss P. Woman. Miss P putting her order for she Earth Strong because it's Earth Strong for Miss T. Scorpio season. Her birthday oh, is next, wow. next week, Tuesday. So do give her some love as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's uh, got me lots cooking of out. She's got me baking. Up. Lots of birthdays. Yeah. Lots of birthdays. And when is um, yeah. Miss Janelle's and Iola's? No, Janelle's the first of January, so she's New oh, Year's okay. Eve. No, New Year's New Year's yeah. Day, New Year's yeah. Day, yeah. and Iola is end of March, I believe it was oh, okay. end of March, beginning of April. She's at um, Aries. Oh, okay. So oh, she's okay. fire, 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 fire. Yeah, <laughs> and Janelle's just uh, nice and mellow, but bossy yeah, at the same yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's get the show um, started. So yes. for those who haven't seen my menopause part one, do make sure after the show that you do check it out because there was some stories that were shared from the ladies who are going to be joining us very shortly. And, um, and obviously from the doctors themselves. And today they're going to be talking about remedies, things that they can provide for we. <laughs> okay that's, that's what we need we need well, the remedy that's what we yeah. need absolutely yeah. and you know and for those who's yet to be coming to the stages because we're all going to go through we're all going to face it every yeah. single female a woman to, yeah that's it it's it, it, come it i got come for true all right so mm. um what a big up to those who are watching right now, big up yourself, Akua. I was thinking about you today, Queen. I'm gonna to have to give you a call. And she I said, well, well, ladies, I'm recording a quick one and we'll join you after in a bit. Okay, all right, cool. We look forward to having you on board. And for all of you that are with us, thank you so much. And do yes. just send us a comment so we know exactly who's in the building with us this mm -hmm. evening or this morning or whenever, whatever time of the day that you are actually <laughs> in. And uh, we've got Madeleine. She said, I hate, I hate um, it. Walk yeah, my period I'm back. Oh, I'm so sorry. But you know what, babe? You can take my period because I have like two periods a month. If you want it, you can gladly take it. We're just, no, actually, I don't want the menopause just yet. Let me just, yeah. but Madeleine, I, I told you, no, right. I'm dreading it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, That's hopefully, with all the say. advice that we get from the doctors, it will make our transition and make our experience a little bit more easier. Or, you know, from all the information we get from the doctors and all their recommendations. Yeah, so it just makes sense. Let's bring in the ladies into the building. We're going to start off with Miss T, who's one of the co hosts of Now Chat Show. What a way you look pretty. <laughs> What? Who that? Who see this? She's going to get married. She's going to your wedding. Yes, sir. Very oh, nice. I don't. I can't. Do you know what? I can't even see. Like I've forgotten my glasses. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see you, and you look good. 
Thank you, look my good, sister. Man. You look Beautiful. All right, so we've got Denise James in the building. Hey, Hi, Denise. Denise. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing this evening? I'm tired, but I'm good. <laughs> I hear yeah. you. I'm very excited to 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 see what um you know what transpires here this evening. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yes. Definitely. Um, let's bring in Sparkle. Where's Sparkle? Sparkle, what a wish. Her uh, background looks pretty. Yo. <laughs> Did you see the way she just made it? Just in. <laughs> she's coming and going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming and going a little bit, Sparkle. But that's I'm better. Like, yeah, in my yeah, movies. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's bring in the <laughs> let's bring in the bad man's them. Who's gonna tell us yeah. about what we can, what we can't eat? Let me kiss my teeth. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is a break. No cocktail for you, boy. <laughs> we can't hear you. Uh, can't yeah, hear I think you. I was muted. Oh, okay. How are you guys oh, we doing? Didn't mute you. Yeah. We're doing wonderful. Good excellent, How excellent, excellent. It's, um, we just had the weather change over here. We just had the weather change. We had a, a summer 2.0. You know, it gets hot again out here in Atlanta. And okay. then um, literally this morning, it went down to, you know, just 50 something. It's still warm for you guys, but cold for us, you know. So, okay. We're, 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 how's everyone okay. doing? So, you really needed to mention that, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Anytime we speak to anyone in the UK, we've got to remind everyone why we left. <laughs> okay. But it's all love, though. It's all love. How's everyone okay. doing? We, yes. Everyone is Excellent. great, I believe. Wonderful. Um, we just had a comment from Madeleine. Madeleine said um, she's been suffering for 10 years now. Yep. Um, is she one of your... Um, no, I can't do you, One of your ladies, Madeleine. Madeleine. Do you know Madeleine? Yeah. I'm not sure about the name. Maybe Dr. Amsu knows her. He'll be back here in a second. Yeah. How old is Madeleine? Tell us how old you are. Uh, what are the symptoms? Yes, let us know what yeah, you're Yeah, Madeline, if you could just let us know your age, what your symptoms are. In fact, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to share the link. So if anybody wants to hop on, they can do. Yep. Oh, 59. 59. 59. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, you know, based on sort of uh, global averages, that's about right. Okay, maybe started a little bit earlier, but remember the average age for women to start to experience most of the severe symptoms of menopause is around 52. So she's 59 right. and she started 10 years ago. Um, it, it's, it's, it's about right. Mm. But um, what, what symptoms in particular um, does she most have issues with? I mean, if you can get, if you can jump on or just type them out, um, that'd be interesting to know. But if you remember guys, um, we spoke about on the last session that African-American people, people with those polymorphisms, people who have um, susceptibilities because of um, immuno, immuno compromised um, bodies, right? Are experiencing symptoms way earlier, 10, 10 years earlier than the average. So 40, 41, 42. Wow. And remember, we were talking about how many women, because they don't know the symptoms they're suffering are menopause, they assume because they're young that there's something else. They don't report that to the doctor. They just assume it's part of their cycle. A lot of doctors don't take into consideration that black people have these these nuances right and so when they do express issues with things like menopause related um symptoms they disregard that as well so unfortunately black women tend to suffer longer and tend to not remediate those symptoms at an earlier age because of the lack of um awareness so yeah i, I you know we we hear this quite often dr amsu so madeline do we know madeline i'm gonna get a second name um you know she wants her period not worse She's she's not from North. <laughs> North we're from I think she is from North, uh, I think she's from London actually. She's from Northwest. I know every Madeline in Northwest London. So uh, yeah. oh, how you know every Madeline? Yeah, how you know every. <laughs> hold on, you hold on. Want to well, you're they, they, they with, is it sound you're friends with, you're friends with um, Elijah, aren't you? Your friends with Derek, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so that that just covers everything. Right, right. Because <laughs> I just town. probably cussed me now. What are you trying to say? <laughs> AKA dirty stop out. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, <laughs> not say the words. <laughs> so one, one, thing, 
one thing what I wanted to point out though is that all right, so menopause is a is is a natural process, right? And it's supposed to occur between 45, say 45 and 55, right? And you're not supposed to have severe symptoms. You're not supposed to, in nature, you're not supposed to go through hot flushes. You ain't supposed to go through mood swings. You're not supposed to go, you know, you're not supposed to start losing memory. You're not supposed to start having mood swings and all that. What it is, is because of new, new technology, inventions of things like petrochemicals, pollutants, um, processed foods, you know, the, um, the industrialization of food, which has turned, basically replaced real food with artificial flavors, preservatives, and sweeteners, right? All these things, a combination of all of them are, have been having an impact now on um, do you, are you all aware of what's going on with the hair relaxers? Yeah, yeah. I think you touched on that last time. Um, so, well. so there's some big lawsuits going on over here right now against all dark and lovely, all oh, the wow. curly this and wavy that and all these, all the all the relaxers. Um, there's there's a woman who brought suit and other women have joined the lawsuit, so it's now like a class action where all these black women who have now uterine cancer mm -mm. because of these um, hair relaxers, right? So here's the funny thing is that from around 10 years ago, we started exposing the endocrine disrupting chemicals in these, in these products. And, you know, and it's from hair relaxers to skin lotions, to makeup, to, you know, perfumes, right, where you have these um, substances called phthalates, right, P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates, right, so it's pronounced phthalates, but it actually looks like, when you look at it, it's P-H-T-H, so it's like, how, how you pronounce that? Yeah, like, pronounce, that's to say P-H-T-H. Right, it's pronounced <laughs> phthalates, right? Some people say phthalates, some people say phthalates, but these, there's, it's a group of chemicals, right, that are that were invented and they were to soften plastics. So you see, like when I was a you, right, there was hardly anything made of plastic apart from like Lego and a few toys, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't, we didn't, we used to get our meat when you went and bought meat, you would get in a brown paper bag, right? So we wasn't store, we had glasses, and then remember. I, you don't need to show your age, ladies, right? But remember when Tupperware became a thing? When the people came to your house in the... Who, who, who remembers the 70s, first of all? Because I've seen some yeah, black faces here. Right. You all remember Tupperware, oh, man. <laughs> you all remember Tupperware. So Tupperware, we all had glasses in the house. And we used to have, you know, our pots and, you know, Pyrex. Pyrex was the thing. Yeah, right? Pyrex dish. And you to store stuff in your fridge in glass and you would get a cover or whatever for it, right? Then Tupperware came around. So they started making more use of these plastics and rubbers and whatnot. Now the materials that they use, plastics were more hard substances, but they had they added this chemical that would make it more flexible, right? And this is these are the these were one type of phthalates, right? So they found more uses for these phthalates and these petrochemicals. So through oil, there were all these byproducts when they would put oil through refineries, right? So there was all these byproducts, basically waste, but they found use for it and managed to sell black people Vaseline and all kinds of stuff that, oh. and these are waste products, yeah. waste. But they found uses for them and sold them to us, marketed them to us, because we're suckers for marketing, right? Black people are the biggest suckers for marketing. And they did not know or they claim they didn't know. And, and when you create a new substance, you ain't gonna know the long-term effects. But they found through studies over the past 40 years or so or more, right? 40, 50 years, they found how these substances interact with our cells at a cellular level, how they interact with our um, endocrine system, how they 
interact with our neurological or central nervous system, right? How it interacts with our blood. And they found that it is adverse. More often than not, it's adverse because there are things called bisphenol A's, right? Which um, now when you go and you buy anything that you're going to be drinking out of, right? That's made of plastic. They'll say no BPAs, bisphenol yeah. A's, right? Because any time you drink a substance, right? Water or whatever, right? Let me bring this into the thing. So, you know, I'm talking about a drink fluid. Mm -hmm. These plastic chemicals the chemicals that are contained in plastics leach into liquids into fluids right so we you know we we drink it and it, and because it's in a liquid form it easily absorbs into our bloodstream and then it causes issues now these issues range from causing cancer from causing um reproductive disorders such as fibroids such as adenomyosis such as pcos polycystic ovary syndrome to infertility to even um gender orientation right so there are even studies out there showing that these substances endocrine disrupting chemicals right that they use and it's and and they're also used in fertilizers pesticides and fertilizers so they're actually in the food by way of pesticides and fertilizers right and weed killers and whatnot, right? They interrupt and disrupt our endocrine system. And our endocrine system is responsible for how we communicate chemically, responsible for our hormones, for how our brain communicates with organs around the body. And it also alters behavior. So part of that behavior is sexual orientation. And there are thousands, if not millions of studies on it, but no one talks about it because we're now living in a time where the alphabet army will jump on you when you make these, Can I... um, when you talk about them. And they're not claims, they're scientifically proven facts. Right. I, I just want to jump in on that as well. So I was having a conversation with someone the other day and, you know, we're always trying to relate what we say to actual facts. Because here's the thing, if you can't see it, people don't know it exists, right? They don't believe that it exists. Right. If it's not being quantified, and asserted by the establishment, they won't believe you, especially if you're young, if you're black, you're a man or a woman, right? So now I just want to make a reference to um, how these EDCs, these chemicals disrupt how our bodies um, react to these chemicals, right? Now, you mentioned the 70s, and I started laughing because if you remember the 70s is when um, Arnold Schwarzenegger opened up Gold's Gym. Do you remember the bodybuilders? Do you remember the steroids, right? And do you remember the men that were taking the steroids and all of a sudden, you know, people were getting that, you know, human the muscles. Block. Remember the, the Eastern, Eastern Block women? Now, do you remember the women started taking steroids when they started the women's, when women started to compete in bodybuilding, right? Now, at the time, women were taking testosterone. Now, if you remember, they would, some of them would get an Adam's apple. Their voices would get deeper, right? And they would definitely, um, they'd get broader shoulders. They started to become, well, androgynous, Right. right. Now, my point isn't even the androgyny. The point is this. Whatever chemicals were in those drugs, it was changing their physical um, um, uh, representation. They were changing physically. These are the types of chemicals that are in our food. These are the types of chemicals they're using to line tin cans. So when you buy tin, you know, it's best, you, know uh, you can keep food in a tin can for years. What they don't tell you is that they actually line the inside of tin cans with a very thin layer of plastic. That thin layer of plastic secretes EDCs. Um, estrogen is one of the main um, EDCs or chemicals that seeps from the inside of tin cans, right? We talk about the hair care products. Now, not only do you put the hair care products in your hair, even if you're not using the um, perming lotion and you use the oil and you do the hot comb press. Let me tell you this now. Whenever you heat oil, Whenever you heat anything to its boiling point, to its melting point, it releases carcinogens. Carcinogens are endocrine disrupting chemicals. So the point I wanted to make that reference with the bodybuilders is that we know and everyone knows for a fact that people that take steroids develop the muscles that, you know, their orientation kind of changes. They get the deep voice. They get hairs. You know, the genitals can shrink or grow, depending. You know, all these manner of things happen to their bodies. We know this for a fact. In fact, they've been competing and winning medals for it. It's the same type of chemicals that are in our food. So when women 
black people, black women and men are developing breast cancers and ovarian cysts and other growths, it's because of these endocrine disrupting chemicals. No different from the bodybuilding stuff, except it's not for your biceps. The way your body is going to react to it is a tumor, some kind of growth, a blood disorder. Remember, these are all um, uh, types. Of, I just want to add that. In the right. And, and, and here's the thing is that um, sex hormones are steroids. Whether you're talking about um, testosterone or you're talking about estrogen or you're talking about progesterone, right? Or cort cortisol. These are steroidal substances. So if you ever had a rash and they say, right, we're going to give you some cortisol. That's a steroid. Mm -hmm. And steroids basically diffuse across the cell membrane into the nucleus of a cell. So they cross cell barriers easily. So they bind. And, and here's the thing with black people. We have an affinity to estrogens, right? We have uh, polymorphism, which is a, a, a difference, right? In our estrogen receptor alpha that we, what, what was termed as upregulate the effects of estrogen. So we amplify these effects. So whereas some other white, like white people will make, ingest the same substance but it doesn't devastate them as badly as it devastates us so black women are for instance 10 times more likely to have fibroids right now when you look at all what's out there in 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 the news or what's what's published in blogs or whatever they'll say two to three times some say five right but there are studies that show 9.7 times Black women are 9.7 times more likely to develop can, um, fibroids and reproductive female reproductive disorders than their white counterparts. And it also affects okay, men. Can I just stop you there for one minute, Dr. Abisu, yeah. because today's topic is about menopause. So we have to stay yeah. on the topic because we're so, going from so, fibroids. So, yeah. Well, Carry all on. this is to say, all this is to say, right, that... It's the same endocrine disrupting chemicals that are responsible mm -hmm. for the harsh symptoms that women experience. So women experience hardship with their reproductive organs, right? Their neuroendocrine system and the exchange between, because your brain is constantly communicating with your uterus, your ovaries, with with glands around your body, but the reproductive system, there's constant communication that takes place, right? So the, the health of one will disrupt and, and adversely can adversely affect the other. So there's this symbiotic relationship that they both have to be in good health for it to take, um, for, for you to stay healthy. So, okay. So are you saying that basically all the things that you've mentioned so far, you're saying that if we're not eating right and we're putting waste on our body, if we're using the perms, that means our menopause will affect us. Experience will be a lot worse. Yes. That's so, and so it will be same, a lot same worse. how you started That's puberty. Right. The same way how, you know, you start puberty and a lot of girls had um, aches when their breasts started growing. Right. You're not supposed to go through growing pains in your breast. But these are signs. Some girls started um, their menses very early. Right. There's some girls like 10, 9. Right. Earlier. Some girl. Right. Some girls earlier. Some girls were fit when I was in, you know, when I was in junior school. It's like, hey, what's going on over there? Because of these endocrine disrupting chemicals were maturing them quicker. Right. Mm -hmm. Some girls had acne. Mm -hmm. Some girls gained a lot of weight. Right. Some girls had thyroid issues from they were really young. Now, when they get older now, if they don't correct this lifestyle, when they get to menopause. Right. So girls have issues with their cycles. Right. When they come on their periods. Right. They have bloating. Yeah. They have all the cramping, all the pain, heavy bleeding, irregular bleeding, all that kind of stuff. And us guys, we don't know nothing about it. Then you have issues, you know, with the fibroids and the cysts. And that. Then come to menopause now, you go through horror shows because a lot of black women especially have hysterectomies because that's the first thing these GYNs turn to, 
when you have mm. fibroids, first of all, they tell you, oh, it's only small, we're going to monitor them or whatever, right? Then in a year or so, they're large and it's like, all right, you need a hysterectomy. And there's a conflict of interest because they make money from your hysterectomies. They make money from the, from the medication that you're going to take. Then, so that puts you into early menopause because your ovaries, right? Especially if you get a full um, um, hysterectomy, you're removing your ovaries. Your ovaries are responsible for producing your, the majority of your estrogen, um, testosterone, and progesterone, right? And these highly regulate your moods, right? Highly regulate energy, right? Especially um, estradiol to your brain, right? Estradiol actually um, pushes neurons to um, get energy, glucose to the brain. So when you have a plummet in estradiol, and I'm talking about endogenous, meaning internal, that you produce in your body, not from outside, right, from these xeno um, estrogens, which are from the plastics and that, quality estradiol plummets, right? So your brain doesn't get energy. So the, so the energy level of, of your brain, when, when, you're, when you're going through menopause or gone through menopause, now you're postmenopausal, your brain energy production plummets. It falls by like, 20% in like a year or two 20% energy drop mm. so a lot a lot of women feel lethargic they're tired all the time i'm feeling drained mm -hmm. I, you know it doesn't affect how intelligent you are but it just makes you basically more lazy like i can't be bothered you know and it also what affects you say it's different... lazy or just more or less motivated Right, I mean, lethargic. Yeah. Lazy is, yeah, is, is a bit of yeah. a, right, but it makes you don't it, it, right. Your motivation falls when motivation falls. It's mm -hmm. like I can't be bothered. You know, I, I I don't. I'm not in a mood. You know, where a man want to have sex and you're like, all right, go on then. You know, your 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 your, your whole your whole flex changes. Right. Um. There's 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 different areas of the brain. Right. There's the hypothalamus, which regulates temperature, right? So because estradiol falls, right, your hypothalamus is affected. So that's where hot flushes come in because your body is no, no longer, the temperature gauge is off. Mm. So you might get too hot and then followed swiftly by cold, feeling sh shivery and stuff, right? You get, you yeah. get chill, right? Then there's the brainstem, which is responsible for sleep, for your sleep pat patterns. That's affected by the drop in these um, hormones. Because remember, your ovaries were producing a good 80% of these sex hormones, right? Now, now it, it starts to deteriorate, especially with um, if you've had a hysterectomy it no longer exists your ovaries aren't there so your adrenals are now responsible for producing these and they produce them a lot less right so okay so, so yeah, I just go need ahead, to go wrap ahead. up there because what I want to ask because some of the ladies that's on the um the panel as well we've got questions and obviously we've only got like an hour of the show remaining and um right. because obviously the ladies shared in regards to some of the symptoms that they were having I think a need you were talking, um, Spark. You mentioned about anxiety, um, feeling like you know, just feeling quite low in moods, depression, etc. Not sure, you know, questioning what have I done with my life. Um, I think Denise, did you mention something about dryness and about um, childhood trauma being more or kind of probed even more because of the menopause? Was that yeah. you mentioned it about yeah, yeah, and, I, and I'm mostly so, hot. <laughs> Because what we right. kind of want to know in regards to what the black detox, what have you got in terms of remedies that can help us? Because we're right. going to go through this regardless. Do you know what I mean? And even though you're right. sharing regards to, you know, the different products and what the truth be told, as people of color, people ain't going to stop eating chicken. People ain't going to stop eating red meat. People ain't going to stop doing all of those things. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's like life threatening, but we just want to hear in regards to what have you guys got on your shelves that can help us today? 
Right. I mean, this is the thing is that when you're young and your metabolism is nice and high and you, you can burn off toxins and whatnot, right? We have, we have, you know, you know, you buy a new car and you open the bonnet and you look at the engine and look, Chris, everything's oiled and everything's turning correctly, you know? So if you put some cheap, you know, um, some cheap Tesco petrol in it or whatever, you ain't worried about it because the car's brand new. That's when we're young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the engine's working great. As we get older now and certain things like rust and corrosion and erosion take place, things ain't, cogs aren't turning the way they used to turn. Now these substances like chicken, like turkey, beef, steak, pork, whatever kind of meat, dairy, right? All these things that, that are toxic to the body, they become life-threatening. Because when you go through menopause, there are life-threatening conditions. Like I mentioned the last time about Alzheimer's and dementia, these things are life-threatening, right? Two-thirds of the, the, of the world of dementia are women because of menopause, because of that plummet in the sex hormones, specifically estradiol, right? So now it becomes a life-threatening situation that never used to exist. So the, the degradation of bodily function, the, the mood swing, because remember, mood swings and depression and anxiety, right? And depression can lead to suicide where you take your own life because why am I here? When you start questioning your existence, mm. what have I done with my life? Basically, I feel useless. There's no point. What's the point of me? These mm. are suicidal thoughts, right? So whether it's like a condition, a medical condition, a physical, physiological condition, right? It's just as bad as a, as a neurological, psychological condition where yes. you start to question your existence and you can <laughs> say, right, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to take a whole bunch of sleeping pills <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so these things, when we start talking about remedy, we have supplements, right? But the supplements work best when you're not counteracting them with these toxins. Yeah. So we have meal plans, right? We, we, we offer meal plans and nutrition plans where here's the best way for you to keep your body when you are eating. And then the supplements are basically supplementing what you eat with nutrients that otherwise would not be in your food. But there's a difference between getting nutrients and swamping your body with toxins. And it's and that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody's like, "Well, I don't want to," no, I don't want to give up meat. I don't want to give up my ice cream and my pizza and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but here's the thing: you are worth it to do that. When you mm -hmm. start taking charge of your life, it's like it's a lifestyle change. But we're trying to um, give you guys this information so you can teach your daughters, nieces, and grand granddaughters, right? Women in your cousins who are younger than you, right? That look, there's a point in your life where you have to start to fix up, right? And put aside fetishes and putting aside these cravings, right? And here's the thing, cravings exist, are, are more prevalent in women because of there's a hormone called ghrelin right that is that is more pronounced in women women produce more ghrelin than men which is basically the hunger hormone so you will crave stuff right you have these cravings and hunger is a craving that your body's basically alerting you that and hunger's supposed to come about by all right i'm i'm i'm, I'm low in energy i'm low in nutrients i need to re-up on these nutrients, I need to re-up on energy, right? In the form of glucose and other nutrients, right? But that now gets replaced with, you know what? You know, I can fan you know what I fancy right now. Mm -hmm. I fancy some ice cream with 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 some turkey and you know, some some mad combination of food. And none of it's good. 
and in these um, artificial flavorings and um, artificial flavorings, they they deliberately use excitotoxins that are addictive. They get us addicted to certain flavors where we don't even know, but we have these cravings and the cravings are actually addictions. Okay, so we've got Denise who wants to say something. So you, just to wrap up what you're saying, so in terms of our, um, like our cravings, it's just like not being controlled and we need to be able to control these um, kind of urges and things like that but at the same time if we've been programmed in a specific way then it's going to be kind of hard for some of us to unlearn those programming in terms of our diet you know just just, just having a craving you know like a, 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 a mum to be she's got a craving she wants to eat like something unusual like maybe eating soil off the ground Do you get what I'm saying so mm -hmm. How can then, can you just say, okay, I'm going to stop doing this because it's going to have an impact on my on my body. But before we go continue that, I just wanted, Denise, Denise, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to Denise? Um, go back and, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I just wanted to go back on that mind-body connection you spoke about, like depression being very real um, because it could lead to suicide Um um, and, and I think that's very important that there, there are a group of women, myself included, who are, are going through the menopause. And, you know, though I the, the hot flashes are really difficult still sometimes, especially at night because it interrupts my sleep. I'm still managing to live a holistic life. So I think there's a lot that women like myself could also um add to the conversation about you know what can help you know so I know meditation is really good you know therapy is really good when there's stuff in your life that just hasn't been working either um you know um looking at your life and really kind of trying to live the life you know that you've always wanted to live there's, I think there's so many things that sometimes we have to look at psychologically mentally emotionally spiritually as well as physically in terms of meals and um and, and vitamins and, and all that so I just wanted to add that um yeah because right. I, I do a lot of exercise now more than I used to before in in the beginning my weight was up and down and I'm actually now I weigh less than I did when I was much younger so you can turn it around but it really begins with kind of honoring this mind body spirit if you like um being that we all are right and and here's the thing your health is your spirit your health is your spirit because spirit you have inspire you have expire right so we inhale and exhale we inspire we take in spirit, which is oxygen, electricity, and that, and your your how vibrant you are, how your moods are, is all to do with how you process energy. Everything's about energy processing and exchange and transference and pathways. And when there's a disruption to that, right? So when people tell me about, you know what, you know what, I'm gonna do this, but I'm spiritual and that, it's like if you are low energy. You're not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Spiritual means that you're full of energy. Low vibration. God is life. You mm -hmm. know, that light that shines in the darkness and the darkness yeah. comprehendeth it not. All of that, that's yeah. your energy levels. So, and our energy levels are determined by how well we process glucose, right? So there's a physiological um, pathway, mediation that takes place to, en to ensure that you are spiritual. So you can't have without with, you can't have one without the other, right? Yeah. So how well we when we breathe in, there's a there's a whole system, the um the respiratory system has its way in which we pull oxygen and we provide electricity to our cells, right? We're breathing in um all all these gases we breathe in, but we will extract from those gases oxygen and we try to filter out the others so there's a way in which our bodies are supposed to be working which is why in every scripture there are dietary laws at the beginning it's like look if you want 
to live a spiritual life, you have to give yourself quality foods. But you I, have to have a quality diet. But uh, Yeah, I agree because it all works together. But I think that the main thing is the the mind. You see, if you can um, read Bible, but if your mind is telling you, say, you know, you're not good enough. You're still going to eat that food that you know isn't good for you. So mm -hmm. I really think That's that right. definitely you can't do the mind about the food. But until you do the mind, then the food is not going to work. That's uh, from my uh, point of view. Uh, uh, absolutely. The part is very important because when you love yourself, then you're not going to eat that food because you want to live. You want to live yeah. long. Come on. And you yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, the, 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 the mind bit as well. And here's the thing. And it's the tricky bit, right? Because it comes down to education. You know, we can all go back to when we were kids at school and think of all the things we couldn't do as kids, whether it's riding a bike, even walking and running. Do you remember you couldn't run the first time you ran and drop and bust your knee? You know what I'm saying? It's like whenever we were educated or we were taught or we had a guide or, or a mentor or someone to follow, we learned. Once we learned, we built up that emotional and that um, dexterous or emotional dexterous kind of um, accountability for that act, right? We, we became knowledgeable. And it's the same thing with the mind. The reason why so many of us struggle with changing our diet, even doing a regular diet, you know how many people just can't do any kind of diet, any kind of shift from their daily routine, mm. from their, you know, from their prescribed breakfast, lunch and dinner, you're blowing their mind. You tell someone don't eat meat, they'll pull out scriptures on you and tell you why God said that we should eat meat. And you know what I mean? And so it's that cognitive dissonance. When it comes to education, how many people know their anatomy? You know, we've got Dr. Keeler on the call here. Dr. Keeler is one of our, our specialists and, and one of the team here. We've, we've, we've invited her on to come and share something with you from, from the wounds perspective as well. But how many of us know the human anatomy? If you were to ask the average person in the street, and we need to go and do this, Dr. Amsu, <laughs> name three parts of the gastrointestinal system. Yeah. Deer in headlights. People sure. don't know. But <laughs> when they get educated and you tell them, well, you know, when you eat food, you know, the, the, the digestive system starts in the mouth when you release saliva, when you smell and all the rest of it, and then you insatiate, imbibe it, and then it goes, and then you've got uh, 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 stomach enzymes and 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 uh, um, how, how the pancreas is involved and the gallbladder. When you start to educate people on that, and then they start to realize, hold on a second, yeah, so when I eat potato, it does this to me. When I eat saturated fat, it does this to me. Lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance. Right. When I'm eating cakes and dairy, it does this to me. So a lot of that mental thing is partly psychological in terms of just social psychological defense. The other part is that we just don't know because when you know, you start to like, you know, I'm always, I'm always into that relating things together. When you know the anatomy, then you feel a pain. Like if I say, how many people can point to where their pancreas is? The average person, real talk. They don't know where their pancreas is. Where's your spleen? Mm. So now when you feel a pain there, oh, I may have a pain on my back. That's your kidney. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean? so as people get more educated, they start to relate. Yes. To ah, that's yeah, what it is. I know if I eat certain oil, I get a pain back here. Oh, that, I've got something going on with my gallbladder, right? And now, the reason I'm going in there to talk about the mind is that a lot of that mental fortitude comes from, or the lack of mental fortitude comes from being in the dark and not knowing. Because the minute you know, you start to piece things together, you start to discern BS from reality. Do you know what I mean? So 100%, the mental aspect is completely key, but it's driven through education and, you know, and conversations like and, this. And, and that's the thing is that, you know, that, that thing, know thyself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. in, in the know, know thyself, right? Know, knowing thyself is, is to know your anatomy. First mm -hmm. things first, know what physically makes you up. Now, what's been lost is that, you know, um, religions basically supplanted knowledge of the body because everything became spiritual. You know, so when you say, do you know yourself, though, people start thinking about their psychology. Well, I'm this type of person. Some people get into horoscopes and, you know, well, I'm a I'm a Leo and Leo's the No, I don't I don't play that because I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. It's like, wait, 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 what's, what's going on in your physical body? You know, because your brain houses the mind. Yeah. Without your brain operating correctly, you ain't gonna under you won't even be able to discern between reality and dream, mm. right? Because your because if your brain, your neurons and your synapses are all over the place, yeah, reality mm. is abstract. So 
your 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 brain your the, the the health of your central nervous system your brain and central nervous system your enteric nervous system your gut all these nervous systems right your autonomous or autonomic nervous system all these situations they are all part of your spiritual psychological and physical well-being right and nu nutrition is key to maintaining all of those. So if you start feeling bad about yourself and you start doubting yourself, this is a chemical situation that's taking place. This is a chemical cascade. So how do you get that balance then? So how do you get that balance? If you, because I, I have that struggle. I have a struggle within myself um, about self-confidence, self-belief, etc. And I'm sure for a lot of us, not just myself, many other people as well. So if you're saying it's like a chemical imbalance, then what is then the key? How do we then get that balance then in terms of chemical? So I was just about to um, segue to something because I know we want to be mindful. Today was meant to be like a QA, and a and we do want to answer questions and maybe guide some women through yeah. this. So we, yeah. those um, those conversations specific conversations to individuals who are actually going through it will help i think a lot of people on the call i think these conversations are great because you know we're all about the education absolutely but dr amsu and dr keela i want to i want to pull something out because i went i got the guys at the back there to pull out some of our products now you're probably just going to see bottles in my hand it's not it's not going to mean much to you but i want to show you as we talk through maybe um, point out the, the few things we have and why we have them and then you start to sort of make the correlation between the symptoms of menopause the symptoms of african-american and black people face you know black women have more hot flashes for example um we talk about the, the we we're just talking about the mind and and the you know sort of i don't say mental degradation with regards to the estrogen and the lack of glucose to the brain and the energy to the brain and the brain is what you need to you know to sort of trigger and fire and manage these synapses you know i was going to relate something real quickly dr amsu dr keela um sleeping tablets and sleeping aids right uh, I just call it marzipan, to marzipan and all those kind of right. um, those products, right? For people that have problems sleeping, right? And a lot of the problems they have in sleeping is because of the imbalance in their in their in their neuro um, the brainstem. Their, their brainstem. The drugs they give you. What are the side effects of these drugs? Most of them, I, I can probably go online and pull them up and run through them. But seizures, you guys can do that. Liver, seizures, kidney. dizziness, kidney, uh, anxiety, <clears throat> depression, right. memory loss, hallucinations. People sleepwalking. How many people uh, are arrested because they leave their house, get in their car and drive, you know, downtown in their pajamas. And then they wake up in the police cell. They didn't realize, you know, because they, they, they found out that they were taking these sleeping aids. Right. Why am I relating that? The effects those sleeping aids have on the body is the exact same effects to a degree that menopause is having by depleting um, the um, effect that your neurotransmitters are having uh, communicating in the brain. Dr. Hampson, can we talk about Neuroplex, please? Um, I'll ask her on this topic and then we can um, sort of go down into the others. All right. If, so, if, unless you want to, I mean, I just. All right. Um, so, somebody, um, Mac, Magdalene Oct Octave Marquis. Yeah, Magdalene. She, she's one of the first. At the Magdalene of the court, Octave yeah. Marquis. I think that's how you say your name, right? Um, you said you're confused. So, my menopause is called my, by, by my brain. Menopause is a neuroendocrine change, right? So, relationship between your brain and your ovaries or your uterus right your ovaries produce um hormones that are triggered by the brain right there's gonadotropin releasing hormone there's you know there's pathways that take place for your ovaries to work but your ovaries have a finite amount of time when they're doing their primary um objective which is to you know mature eggs and to release eggs for pregnancy so you know when we start you know with primordial or primal function or the primal function of women is to get pregnant and have babies right it sounds a bit harsh or you know it sounds misogynistic but <laughs> getting down to basics right our whole the first commandment was go forth and multiply that was the first commandment go forth and multiply multiply every animal every plant whatever there are seeds there's um pollinating and whatever it's to reproduce of mm. yourself right so that's the primal function so women's primal function is to get pregnant and have children but we are in a place where and in societies where i don't want to have kids 
I choose not to. And, you know, for whatever reasons, we're not telling anybody you, that, you, that you, you, know, you should have children. Go and get a baby. We ain't telling nobody that, right? Because we don't want to get your show cancelled. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but these are the primal functions, right? So yeah. there's this endocrinal, which is the hormones that's being produced, these steroids, these sex hormones that are being produced by the ovaries to, to, um, to basically suffice and to um, allow for you to get pregnant, right? So there's this system, reproductive system that takes place. And there's this relationship with the brain. Now, when your hormones start to slow down, right? And these hormones are responsible for brain function. They play a role in brain function, right? They allow neurons to fire up the brain for en with energy, mm. right? They feed the, they, they, they're responsible for your sleep cycle, right? So we have this circadian rhythm and there's a whole, there's a whole um, mediation pathways of chemical exchange that's responsible for everything that we do. And hormones play a big part in that, right? And they are produced, you know, these sex hormones are produced by your ovaries, right? So when your ovaries no longer are um, producing eggs, releasing eggs, there's a, there's, there's a drop, right? There's a drop. Yeah. And this affects your brain. And that in turn, your brain now affects your reproductive system right. and other functions. So all the changes that you go through, so mood swings, for instance, is um, the um, hippocampus and the uh, amygdala within the brain, right? They're responsible for mood and you know behavior and how good you feel. So they process neurotransmitters that that you know, dopamine and serotonin and, 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 and you know, um, various other neurotransmitters that make us feel, that can make us feel good. And when there's a, when there's a, when there's a disruption in that, now we start to feel bad most of the time, or we, you know, that's when the questions start coming in because we're depressed. We are um, deprived of these you know, nutrients or these chemicals that are responsible for keeping us, keeping us on an upper. Yeah. So, you know, you got, there are, there are drugs that are put out there like antidepressants, right? That are support, that are uppers, uppers to make you feel, you know, they, they give this false, you know, short term temporary relief from these depressive moods. But Antidepressants, one of the side effects of antidepressants is depression <laughs> or anxiety yeah. because, you know, make you feel more anxious. Yeah. Makes you antsy. So, just antsy. so listen, guys, um, no, I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. want to stop you, but I want to stop you for a second. Can I, just... I want to be mindful. Go ahead. Go ahead, um, Kaz. Yeah, because um, Dr. Um, Kalia, you've responded Dr. as Keela. well to Madeleine's. Uh, sorry? Yeah. Dr. Keela. Keela. Dr. Keela, apologies, Dr. Right. Keela. Okay, so um, you was responding as well to Madeleine as well. Um, her questions with regards, obviously following from what Dr. Amsu's just uh, mentioned as well, regarding um, she's confused, uh, uh, menopause is caused in her brain, etc. So you mentioned about the hormones. Um, if you just want to elaborate in regards to your response to Madeleine for those who are listening and catching the replay. We can't hear you. Okay, pleasant afternoon, everyone. I was just um, in support of what uh, Mr. Larty and Dr. Amsu are saying. Uh, I wanted to paint the picture in a way that may help. Uh, you gain a everyday example of what he's talking about because he's on point. When you're talking about menopause, when you're talking about fibroids, endometriosis, uterine and cervical cancer, it's really all the same thing. It's changes in cellular behavior at the molecular level. So you cannot get around the nutrition and the, the eating habits and the lifestyle habits because they directly affect 
how the body perceives what's available to build and to nourish us, what the body perceives as energy lack and energy availability and how the body responds to it. So one person mentioned earlier, how does, we're on fibroids, how does this relate? We need to get to um, menopause. Well, anytime you have a disruption of communication, it affects everything. So at the molecular level, what we have is, think of an orchestra. Shoot, think, in, think of a, a reggae band, right? We have percussion, we have the vocalist, we have the one that plays the melody. It's the same way in the body. Is is you have the person that sets the the whole notes, the downbeat. You know, they have the different drum sets, and then you have the one, the other drummer that plays in between those notes. Still, the whole notes are there, but the drummer, the other drummer, is playing in between those notes. And then we may have a a, a piano player or a violinist, or a guitarist playing the melody. But together, they make a certain resonance. We perceive it as sound. The body responds to hormones, which are secreted by our glands. We have glands all over the place. Even our heart is a gland. Um, our kidneys are glands as well. So the adrenal glands are fatty but they have nervous tissue at the core. They're like a Tootsie Roll. The kidneys are like a long, uh, they're like tiny microscopic tubes bunched up like an accordion, constantly filtering the blood. When we urinate, we are urinating uh, toxins out of the blood that have previously been cleared by our liver. We need a healthy liver to get rid of the stress hormones, to neutralize stress hormones and excess estrogen. For a man, excess testosterone, and particularly testosterone that is of the most potent type, DHT, the hydrotestosterone. Without a healthy liver, we can't get back to healthy sex hormone levels. So our bodies don't function right. Our, our immune system won't function right. Our brain won't function right. If our kidneys are not functioning right because we're not sleeping well, and we're, we're not sleeping well, um, which results in us not being able to detox properly, our kidneys can't go into second shift uh, phase two enzymes. They can't detox well. So all the toxins stay up. Um, we get the brain fog from too much ammonia. We get... Uh, ab um, these hot flashes persisting because we have too much estrogen floating around. Um, if we're not getting enough vitamin D because we're not in natural sunlight, we're not absorbing um, a good amount of magnesium that we need to calm down our nervous system so we don't have anxiety and so we don't get depressed either because you need magnesium to help with anxiety and depression because magnesium disrupts, it dampens down cortisol production. So whenever you're addressing fibroids, you're also addressing menopause at the same time. It's about leveling off, bringing everything back to normal. And as much as um, I will say this, and I, many people of African descent worldwide are very stubborn about our food traditions, not understanding that a lot of our food traditions were imposed upon us. We habitually ate fresh fish that we caught from the oceans, lakes, and streams. What the colonizers did is they would gather fish illegally in other people's territories, send it from the Caribbean up to places like Boston and other states that later became New England for them to salt and ship back to the Caribbean to resell to the population and most of all to us. So we got accustomed to aki and salt fish, cocoa bread and salt fish, but our, bo our bodies to survive that transatlantic trip mm. on the worst type of nutrition possible, yeah. our kidneys and adrenal glands readjusted to maximally absorb salt so we didn't dehydrate before we hit land on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. So when you see a propensity to hypertension in our population, you're yeah. seeing an adaptive process gone awry, made worse by 
colonial like colonial, colonial food, right yeah. right and then when you add on top of that um not knowing the difference between smoke point and um um the point at which oil flares yeah. smoke point is the point where the oil will become a carcinogen the, the the flash point is when it flares both are bad you don't want either most mm -hmm. Plant oils are supposed to be consumed at room temperature because they come from fruits grown at ambient temperature. So you literally have to, we all collectively and individually have to grasp the idea that what we know as our traditions are not completely our traditions. They are Absolutely. colonial ideas imposed upon us that are having reverberating effects at the molecular and anatomic level in our bodies. And then when we go to have babies, our you know, a, 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 an African-American doctor from the States once told me, most black women are not supposed to be entering menopause in their 50s. It's supposed to happen a lot later. Mm -hmm. But we're adopting everybody else's food traditions are those imposed upon us. And we're suffering more because our bodies are electromagnetic. We are even affected by our cell phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dr. So Keela... It's not, a, Dr. it's not a small thing to change habits. It's a right, big right. And, and guys, let me jump in here real quick, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, if you don't, yeah, if you go ahead, uh, Mr. Brace, but Tremaine does have a question and Denise yeah. has a question that we will also bring to right. the table. Right. This, this is actually where I'm going. So what I want to do, guys, is, um, be, again, being mindful of the time. And trust me, Dr. Keelan and Dr. Amsu, we can talk here ad nauseum for weeks and days on end about the intricacies of menopause and the endocrine system and how it affects black people, the history of this. You know, we can go and talk the root causes. What I would mm -hmm. love to hear, and for you guys, there are some questions in the chat and we can, yeah, and, and uh, Kaz, you can help me go through those. I want to talk about real life mm -hmm. hacks, real life um, practices mm -hmm. that we describe with our supplements and our diets and our meal plans and our exercises to help not just deal with menopause once you're in there, but we're talking to some of the people, maybe not on this call, but in, in, in general, how to alleviate those symptoms early on, how to avoid this happening too early. Because as Dr. Amsu and Dr. Gilead both said, what we do, the diet that we eat and our practices when we're teenagers, right? When we're in our twenties is what gears us up for this downhill trend, right? So across the board, but let me just assume if you don't mind, Dr. Thompson, and Dr. Keeler, that we're talking to a bunch of women who are of the age, um, 40 something, going into menopause or starting to see the symptoms, starting to experience the symptoms. What can they be doing based on our paradigms, our programs to A, alleviate, we're not gonna reverse menopause necessarily, right? but to leave it those systems and give them a physical defense to push back the more harsher symptoms and improve their quality of life moving forward. Um, I'll start with you, Dr. Amsey. Okay. So we have, we have, um, we are a dietary supplement company, right? So we, we actually put together supplements and protocols um, to address these issues, right? Um, to address where there's a deficiency, we're going to provide, um, the nutrients, all right? So we've been speaking a lot tonight about the neurological um, issues that go on, right? So we have a supplement called Neuroplex, which is um, neurogenerative, right? So it helps with neurogenesis, creating and maintaining um, neurons, which are basically nerve cells, right? Um, brain cells to make sure that um, there's no inflammation, there's no, you know, to help to alleviate with things like plaque and to also make sure that neurons are firing up and providing, you know, um, getting energy in the form of glucose to the brain, right? Um, we also have a supplement called Venus, which is to help to stabilize um, and provide nutrients so that the adrenals once the ovaries stop producing estrogen and you know the testosterone and progesterone that their this your adrenals are still proficiently producing these hormones right um and to maintain the balance so that there's no what we call estrogen dominance because estrogen there are different estrogens that, that you know your body produces different types of estrogen right um but there are xenoestrogens that can which are these 
chemicals that behave and bind to estrogen receptors that cause issues. So Venus basically stabilizes hormones and makes sure um, your body is pro um, provided with nu nutrients to keep a balance in the production of these sex hormones and also helps with um, calming, calming the body from stress because stress, there are, you know, thousands of stresses that we may encounter during the day, right? There are stresses that we don't even know. We don't see, we don't, we don't interact with them, right? Um, on a conscious level, they are subliminal. These are pollutants, right? There are different types. You know, somebody can say something to you, so sound can affect you, right? So there's sound pollutions, there's a light pollution, there's all these different things that can trigger uh, your adrenals to produce cortisol, right? When your adrenals start to produce cortisol, it affects your levels and progesterone, which are instrumental in your GABA and your, your serotonin, which is the calm has the calming effect on you. So when you when you're fired up and you want to wind down for the night, that's when serotonin, right? Um, your serotonin helps with your melatonin cycle, which is to follow to um, nourish and to give you cellular respiration to cleanse your cells, right? So we have different protocols to um, supplements to do that. Now, there are foods that you need to cut out. And we, mm. spoke, about, we spoke about meat and dairy, which is, you know, that's a that's a, always that what we'll talk about. Whatever the issue is, whether it's hypertension, menopause symptoms or whatever, these are the first things we'll point to is meat and dairy, first and foremost because these are the things that have been put on us to the point where we're addicted to these things. So that's first and foremost, right? Then there are um, things like alcohol and smoking, right? There are, there are things that are in the household that you've got to remove out your household, household chemicals. Um, Dr. I, I, I want to help out here. So I know there are some questions coming in. I want to get to as many questions as possible. I want to set a base here, foundation. Dr. Hamsu, help me out. Dr. Keel, help me out here. I think we may have said this on a previous call. I'm going to say this to everyone on the call, everybody, including me, right? I don't care where you've come from, how healthy you think you are, you know, how fit you are, what you've eaten in the past. Forget the past. That's gone. We take a snapshot of where we are today. Everybody needs to detox. It doesn't matter what journey you're going on. The first thing you need to do is detox because I can guarantee if we were to do the blood work of everyone on this call, we're going to find a whole bunch of toxins, right? And we talk about some of that mental change, trying to get over that. It's really difficult. This is why detoxification works. This is why detox is right. We're the great black detox. This is why detox is so important to us because whether it's menopause or fibroids or cancer or you have a weight condition, you need to start off by cleansing, by clearing out your system. We start with a detox and then we start to layer the supplements and the nutrients and the diet plans you need to get yourself to where you need to get to. Okay. okay. So, um, so, can I cut in? Yes. Because um, it's sort of touching on what I want to ask. Sure, Basically, go ahead. One of the things I wanted to say is that I've not started menopause yet, so I was going to ask what could I do to um, make my menopause experience a lot you know, easier or the transition easier. So one of the things that you said that you have dietary plans, you said you got supplements, yeah? So, um, and then you're saying detox. So to start mm -hmm. with a detox. So if you was to tell me, I'm saying that I haven't had it yet, but from hearing other people's stories, I really want to try and avoid what I can. What's the first thing? So you're saying detox and then what would after be after that? Just yeah, so um, detoxing is the first stage in healing, right? So okay. you wanna, we want to remove those toxins, but we also want to, while you're removing toxins, we want to make sure that you have nutrients. Right. Okay. So we're replacing toxins with nutrients. So on our detox plans, we actually have supplements in those detox plans. So you're mm. basically getting nutrients without the calories. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. So um, and without the um, without the high levels of sugar. So we have all our supplements are low glycemic, meaning they're not going to raise your blood sugar. So even if you're diabetic, it's not going to affect 
your um, blood sugar levels, right? Um, so with everybody, the first thing to do is, and we have different types of detoxes. We have one of our standard ones, which is the 14 day detox, which is not eating anything for 14 days, for two weeks straight, um, where you um, basically stay away from chewing, eating food, even smoothies, where there's a restrictive um, drinks that you, you know, um, liquids in the form of water, coconut water. You know, um, some people, we do tell them that they can boil ginger and have ginger tea with honey, right? Manuka honey um, and structured water. So structured water contains chlorophyll. So um, chlorophyll basically helps with um, you producing healthy blood cells. And again, your blood is what's responsible for carrying nutrients around your body. So it's very important that your blood is pure, that your blood has been purified and detoxed, right? Um, Can so, I... so, no, so the detox, we have different detoxes, but we have our main one, which is our 14 day liquid fast, right? Um, and then as Mikey was saying, from that and you can actually take supplements that we would normally prescribe like all right if you're menopausal these are the supplements that you should take you take those whatever ailment you have you take those supplements as well with the the supplements that come with the detox 14. Uh, what if i haven't got no elements so i'm just uh, if you don't, right if you don't have any ailments I know before if i've not had it yet and I want to try and make sure I don't have as lots of yeah. symptoms or bad symptoms. What do I do? So I know I need to do a detox. And then what else would I need to do? So oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It, it, it's, it's the detox. And then it's going to be the, um, the diet monitoring or the diet change, right? It's a nutritional it's a, plan. It's a nutritional plan, right? Okay. So moving forward, first of all, like, if you were to do a consultation with us, we'd find out your lifestyle. What okay. do you eat? How do you exercise? Mm. How do you think? Tell us about your life, right? because something is manifesting in you. And if you're the most perfect, healthy person in the world, then great, right? We'll just prep you for the future and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna live happy and long, right? But the mm -hmm. average person has got something going on. They have some habit. And here's the thing as well about these habits of food habits is something that- Something that you said earlier about the blood work. Right. Blood work. If you, if you get your blood work done, you might think that you don't have an ailment, right? Now, ailments can be asymptomatic, right. meaning you don't, you don't have something telling you. You don't have an alarm. There's no alert. You know we got alerts on our phone, notifications. There's no notifications mm -hmm. telling you. You know what you got going on. Your kidneys are failing, or you got you know your liver failing, right? So one day, bang, you just get hit, right? But when you have a snapshot of what's going on in my blood, what's going on with all my hormone levels, my you know my hemoglobin levels, or you know or my creatinine levels, or all these different levels, are they too high? Are they too low? Do I have deficiencies? Do I have excess? This is going to let you know what's going on in your body. If there's, if there are, look, we're seeing this raised level of this. This is indicative that your kidney, you have, you know, you you have kidney inflammation, or your, you know, we, you may have gall gallstones. You may have, you know, kidney stones or something. You know, you might be on your way to heart failure, but your blood work's going to give you a good indication right of what's going on with you so even though you're asymptomatic you know um you're, you're going you're going to see and and then we can now say okay these are these are the supplements that you need to take to fix those things before you actually start to you know you might be on your way to a condition or a syndrome Mm. And we can basically prevent, because you know the saying, prevention better than cure, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we want to prevent stuff. We don't want to treat women for postmenopausal or perimenopausal symptoms. We want to, them to be where they don't need to go through an experience, right? Mm -hmm. So everything's about, if you know, and we all know when we do, when we got bad habits, we snack and we've been eating salted peanuts and we've been drinking alcohol. We smoked beer spliffs when we were younger or we might do stuff now. We know mm -hmm. we've been battering our bodies and there's a toll. So we now have to now, all right, let's make 
repairs to what we've damaged before they become an actual thing. Okay, and can well, I just say as well? Okay, so, well, minutes, I was just going to say that. Denise, well, is I was just, yeah, because that's what I was going to get to. That I will definitely contact you and then um, have a consultation, so then I can sure. get the stuff in detail. Denise, do you want to ask your consultations? Sorry, just so, before you get to Denise, how, how much yeah. do you your consultations? So, basic consultations are hundred dollars. And then it varies depending on right. which specialist you want to speak to. So, um, in fact, Dr. Hamster, you had a consultation with a, a, a cancer patient yesterday, right? I think you spent like an hour with her, maybe 45 minutes or so. So it depends. But if you go on, we'll share the link to the consultations. And then um, you just, okay. just drop that menu. It's really simple. Yeah. Right. But I will say this, okay. though. People are more successful with their health goals when they know what the plan is. And that's why the consultations are important. So we'd love for you to just go to the website and start buying a bunch of stuff. But you're more successful when you have a consultation. However, some things are very simple and we'll tell you right now, right? Go and do this detox, go and do that detox. So, um, yeah, questions, guys. Yeah, my Denise. question was about um, an alternative to what you're offering because a lot of people are on low incomes and, and perhaps can't afford to buy into to, to your package. Yep. I know health is wealth and all that, but... Yep. Um, you know, money and financial struggle is, is real. Absolutely. So check this out. You've actually just answered the question. Now, without sort of dragging anybody out or going through their finances, there are very few people that are completely indigent is what they call it here in America, right? If you cannot afford um, almost anything, right? Just food and, and, and shelter sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? You are in a very particular bracket. And in the UK, there should be ways for you to you to get us on our program. You can reach out to us and we'll see how we can help you with that. However, what we tend to find, and this is just through experience, um, Denise, trust me, this is just through experience. When we talk to people, we have these consultations and we find out what they're spending money on. You will be shocked what yeah. people spend their money on. It's what they yeah. prioritize. Yeah. So part of what we do is tell people, listen, you need to prioritize your health. And by mm -hmm. prioritizing, if I mean like literally stop for a second thing, hold on. 400 pound shoes, 300 pound handbag, raving every single week, even food. We had this, it's funny, we had this thing, 14 day detox. For 14 days, you're not buying any food, you're not eating out, you're not drinking any liquor, you're not smoking any cigarettes, right? When the average person in Great Britain, when they did their um, expenses for a month, how much do you think they spent in two weeks on average? 600 pounds. Yeah, I was going to say, how much? Is, how much? Hundred pounds. How much? Six. Six. Six hundred pounds. They don't factor in the eating out. They don't factor in the, the, the smoking. They don't factor in the drinking. Oh. They're only factoring a few things. So what it is is that for those two weeks, you won't be doing any of those things, right? You're gonna be drinking water, coconut water, mm -hmm. limes, the structured water, and we've got all the instructions that you'll be doing the exercises. But here's what I wanted to say very quickly before the questions came in. This is from experience. If you don't believe us, go on our website. You can talk to people. You can't download the app right now, but we can tell you this. What benefit do people have when they do our detoxes? Mental clarity, mm -hmm. lasting, real weight loss, toxic fat, not water fat, not the weight you lose one day on a scale and then three days later, thing comes back. We're talking about abs actual body change, right? Better sleep. Uh, I said mental clarity, right? Um, energy levels. Energy levels. It's funny. People say 14-day detox. There's no way I can do 14-day detox. Then they call us on day eight. I've never had so much energy in my life. And why mm -hmm. that is because you have tons and tons of, I'm being very simple here, tons and tons of energy stored in your body. You see all this excess weight and fat you have on you, it's energy. When your body consumes it and you're not doing any sport, you're not running around, you take the bus, you drive, you sit and watch TV, you sit at your desk all day, your body says, crap, what am I going to do? And it stores it. You all heard what ketosis mm -hmm. is. So when you fast, your body says, wait, I need energy. Now, the supplements give your brain the energy it needs. It gives your cells the nutrients it needs so you're not going to fall out. But then you know what animates you? So wait, I need energy. Guess what it does? It pulls from its store, mm. which is why when people do our detoxes, they pull from the store, Stop they pull out some toxins. You might get a little rash or a breakout, but that toxin was in there. Now, the way the body works is that mm. you will never pull that toxin out. The only way you pull that toxin out is if your body goes in and gets it. Treadmill mm. ain't going to do it. Walking up the road ain't going to do it. I'm not saying don't exercise, but treadmill alone is not going to pull the toxic fat from your stomach. What you will lose is visual weight. You will lose some water weight. But the actual mm -hmm. toxin, you need to detox. So your body has to go in internally and pull from those energy stores, which is why detoxing is so important. It's why it's so effective. So if there's anyone on this show now that doesn't think that they can do it, we can help you get in through it. But if they really want to change their life, 
and you want to be a new person, if you want something you've never had, you need to do something you've never done. I'm no, telling yeah. you, and all this, this isn't a sales pitch. This is generally, if you don't yeah, use our products. Like a, sounds like a sales pitch to me, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it was a sales pitch. Right? I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to be mindful of the time and get there because it's not about a belief thing. The reason why we do our calls every week and every month and we have our website and you can email us, we give our email address, we give out our WhatsApp and phone numbers, all kinds of stuff is because we stand by what we say, we stand by what we do, we stand by our products, we stand by our programs. Most of the calls we get are people thanking us for turning them on to what we told them to get onto. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just being mindful of timing. We'll try and squeeze a few more questions in is that guys, mm -hmm. start with a detox. You can do a consultation, you can mail us, you can, you can you know, uh, speak to Kaz, you can get questions to us and we'll tell you what to do based on what you tell us about yourself. And I wanna say we will guarantee Here's what I wanted to say Go ahead, real Samson. quick. Uh -huh. So health is wealth. You hear people say that. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't get out for now. Mm -hmm. Remember that saying? You don't get out for now. You don't get anything for nothing. Impossible. So if you don't invest, you will not, you cannot create a fortune without investing. The investment is in yourself. So in order to invest in your health, that's what you know. Buying the supplements is that investment in yourself you are worth it this is what i tell every single client or patient you're worth it if you don't think you're worth it all right go and spend that on snacks then you know the amount of money people spend on snacks like you're just you're just hanging out you ain't doing nothing here comes something you need and one of the things that we didn't mention in this insulin resistance mm, plays a mm, mm, big mm, mm, mm. role in harsh symptoms of menopause. What's that? Say that again. Insulin, insulin. resistance. Insulin resistance, which causes... All right, so every time we eat, right, our body um, breaks down the food and it and there's... We, basically, we end up with a lot of sugar in the blood, right? We end up right. with sugar in the blood you know, and high blood sugar is very bad for you. It will kill you. So our bodies have to get rid of that sugar. Either that sugar is going to go into muscle, into, into tissue, into cells, or it's going to be stored as fat, right? So Mikey was breaking down a, a few minutes ago that when we're sitting around all day and we're sedentary, when we eat and do whatever, we're going to store it as fat because we're not using up energy. But as we get older, right, our cells, because we have inflammation and we damage cells we damage our insulin receptors so in order for glucose or sugar to get accepted to go into cells um, insulin needs to bind to unlock that cell to allow glucose in right there's there is you know i'm just simplifying it as you get older and you've battered your your cells and that your 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 insulin receptors are blocked so we become insulin resistant with insulin resistance the energy or glucose is not being put into cells so guess where it's gonna go it's gonna be stored as fat so that's when as we get older we start to gain weight we're like why i i'm eating half as half the amount i used to eat when i was younger but i'm putting on all this weight mm. because of insulin resistance now insulin resistance is not just that you gain weight Right, it means that you that you you're not metabolizing correctly. It's part of one of the metabolic syndromes, right? That you're you're not utilizing energy. You're not getting. You can't now get energy to your cells, to your muscles, and that. So it makes us tired, right? So that's another thing that makes us tired. It also deprives our body of that nutrient. You know, our brains need glucose. Brain food is is glucose. And without it, brain energy goes down, you know? So, and so the autonomic nervous system also requires this glucose, right? And you have things that are, when we talk, start talking about the autonomic nervous system, we're talking about involuntary systems that are involuntary and voluntary, like your bladder, for instance, right? So a lot of women who start going into menopause become incontinent right they they can't control their bladders and it's down to this insulin resistance right 
that plays a major role. So all these factors, right? When you're not getting the correct nutrients into your body, right? And you have toxins and you have inflammation, these are outcomes. So this is why we say, look, you are worth it. You are worth knowing what's going on in your body and doing something about it. It's like knowing something is one thing, but it's all right. What are you going to do about it though? And if it, you know, some, some people like will go on vacations, go on holiday because they're stressed out at work. I need a vacation, people say. And they'll spend two, three thousand pound on a vacation, on a, on a holiday, right? Now, then on your vacation, you go on your, your, your you know, cocktails and whatnot. So you're damaging your body, right? Some people go and they get away from the, the, the hustle and bustle, but they're still causing, um, mm. you know, so stress, right? They, 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 they're, causing, they're causing stress in the body, oxidative stress and other forms of stress, right? And there's no relief from that. So everything that we tell people to do when it comes to your nutrition, this is you actually rewarding your body with substances that it can now utilize to give you more energy, mm. more energy and to be able to process more functionally and, you know, um, without any obstacles, more efficiently. So your body becomes more efficient in the way how it operates. So mm. it's, you are worth it. And if you don't think you're worth it, okay. then you, you know, you will suffer. Right. We've got to wrap up now and we haven't really gone through all the questions. I'm really mindful because it's now 10.30. Um, ladies that's on the panel, do you have any questions? Because I do want to ask some of the questions from those who are watching us live as well. Um, Sparkle, do you have a question? Miss T? No, I'm happy with the information, but I did want to say my people die through lack of knowledge. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sparkle, you got anything to add or um, do you have a question? We can't hear you. You're on mute. Unmute yourself, Queen. Oh, let me unmute her. No, she's muted herself. Let her type it in the. Can she type? Yeah, but it's it's time, isn't it? So, all right. So I'm gonna go to the question. Junie um, Joseph asked the question. Um, I think you kind of touched on this already, but you, she asked, "Is there any advice for women who are post menopausal?" So if you've got any advice, you kind of touched on it, I guess, about the food, etc. Or is there anything else that you need to add? Um, any of the doctors? Okay, what was the question? Sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. is there any advice for women yeah. who are postmenopausal? So yeah. everything we've yeah. been speaking about mm. is everything we speak about. So menopause starts when you've gone 12 months without a period, right? But the day after that day, you are postmenopausal. Mm. All the symptoms, so there's the perimenopausal symptoms, what you experience when your body's going through the transition, right? But your symptoms don't end <laughs> when you say, when after when 12 months, it's like, all right, thank you very much, you're okay now. No, they continue. Yeah. Sometimes they worsen, right? Especially as black women, if you're doing the same stuff. So... The advice for women who are postmenopausal is change your life around. You have to remove the toxins. You have to start getting these. Um, you have to start getting the nutrients that your body needs, right? So we have supplements. The supplements that we were speaking about, you know, your diet. You should you should eat more cruciferous fruit. Um, vegetables. Sorry, more cruciferous vegetables. You should eat more fruits, right? Um, avoid chicken. Avoid to avoid meat, avoid meat and dairy, avoid anything that's going to avoid saturated fats, avoid fried foods, right? Avoid all these things that are going to put your body into a state of, um, into a state of inflammation. 
All right. So, Dr. Keela, I know you wanted to say something real quick. Yes. Uh, the relationship between our body fat, our, re our brain and our reproductive organs is pretty much a one, two, three. Right. So there was a study that came out a few years ago. It wasn't that long that talked about women who and this is going to be more geared to premenopausal women, women who lowered their sugar intake, their starch intake. You know, when they say sugar and starch, they meant processed sugar and starch, as well as their animal product intake that included animal fats in the meat and dairy, actually started menopause later. Mm. And that had to do with changes in hormonal signaling from the body fat to the brain and then ultimately to the reproductive organs. So your, your, your body fat sends signals to your brain when you have sufficient uh, nut uh, nutrient storage to start puberty as a child going into adolescence. And it communicates that same information in your adulthood. Once you've hit a threshold of body fat storage, it starts to shut down the reproductive system. So staying in that fine window where you're fit, but um, not MAGA, you know, not having a, a really low, you have, you don't want a really high or a really low percentage body fat because it throws off everything. You have to find that really healthy balance. So for a young person, who's in their teens and 20s, a young woman in her teens and 20s, having a percentage body fat at 14% is really nothing, especially if she's athletic. But for a woman who is looking to be pregnant, that's a little bit too low. But the, the other extreme is true. Beyond a certain percentage body fat, usually I think it's beyond 24, 25%, that's when we start to get into hormonal changes that negatively affect the brain and ultimately can throw us into menopause faster. So you cannot eliminate changing your eating habits and your physical activity and your sun exposure and your sleep from this whole process because all of those send signal to the brain and the body and reproductive organs to either stay in balance or go to the next stage. Thank you. Okay. Tremaine, do you want to? Oh, no, I was just saying, okay. So, yeah, now what? Those points are really um, interesting. And this topic, boy, it looked like we need a, see, a series. <laughs> because every time there's so much I think, we'll aspect. Um, I think what we'll have absolutely. to do, um, Dr. Break, Dr. Amsu, uh, Mr. Breaks, is we just need to just have a just to show on you guys and then everybody just asks questions. There's so much, but then we're going to be doing the prostate cancer next month, right? Oh, okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so already that looked like a part one and two and maybe three. Mm. Yeah, yeah, when it, when it, when it comes to, um, you know, female reproductive um, issues and, and especially menopause, when it comes to that it, it cannot be condensed into you know a couple yeah. hours and that mm. this is something yeah. that needs the, needs. The, the, the damage runs so deep there's so many things even down to your OBGYNs your GYN has been lying to you all this time what's that OBGYNs yeah a GYN a That's gynecologist oh, a gyne, a gyne, right okay. been lying to you for years right or telling you misinformation right there's this term that's going around misinformation you've been getting misinformation your whole life on how to care for your reproductive organs right and it takes its toll and 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 you know you, you you are the people who are carrying the burden you women are carrying the burden and it's not over like they tell you all right when you get a hysterectomy you know it's over like don't mm. worry it's all all, all, all the all the suffering is going to stop 
But no, you just created a whole new chapter, a whole new episode or series of events that, you know, um, are, are devastating. They can be extremely devastating, you know. So it's like we're trying to reinstill a culture that the education is there so it can be passed on so that, you know, the next generation don't have to be on these calls, you know, talking about what they're going through. Sparkle? Yeah. Yeah, the question I was going to ask, okay, so we're, I know we're rounding up. So, doctors, if you were to give one bit of advice today to, to the listeners to start the process of trying to, those who are already in menopause who are experiencing all the different um, ailments and the different causes, something that could start today they could start today to start that change and then obviously coming to you with a consultation where you can then impact upon that and say well add this to it and add that but something they can do with like an everyday thing like you could say um i don't know boil ginger and drink that start drinking that instead of coffee or something that you can give to the the, the listeners today and listen and us who are going through the menopause some having more adverse effects than others but something that we could start that would help all of us, pre-menopause or post-menopause and, and those in menopause. Could you give us something? Go ahead, Dr. Keela. You go first. <laughs> so the, one of the main things that is get your sleep, lay off the meat and dairy and alcohol. Dairy is not a problem. Meat is not a problem. Sleep is a big problem, but alcohol, whoo. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, the I'll thing drink is, less. I won't drink any in the week. The, the <laughs> thing is, what we use to relax, what we use, what many people often use to relax is counterproductive. Yes. Okay, so start with the alcohol. The alcohol literally poisons the liver. Yes. And you need the liver to detox the entire body, head to right. toe. And if you can't detox the entire body, all your symptoms are going to get worse because you're going to have an overabundance of estrogen and if your ovaries are not responding to it, your uterus will, your cervix will, and estrogen is tells cells to multiply and divide. And if you have any tumor cells that the immune system hasn't cleared out because you haven't slept properly for your immune system to clear out during your sleep, mm -hmm. you will multiply tumors and cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. and yes. off the meat and dairy means don't add any more estrogen to your body that you already mm -hmm. produce than you already produce because you overtax the liver. Right. And staying off and decreasing your processed sugar, processed starch mm -hmm. means that you're not going to throw off your estrogen out of balance with your insulin, which is going to make you insulin resistant. Like if you had polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is basically diabetes of the ovaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then the third thing to add to that, in addition, you need the sleep in order to detox the body through the um, liver, through the kidneys, through the lungs, and through the immune system. Because think about it, when you wake up, what normally wakes us up other than a clock and sunlight is a need to urinate. That is the kidneys getting rid of uh, water-soluble toxins that were first made water soluble by the liver and then uh what else do we do when we first wake up if we have chronic inflammation going on from eating the meat the dairy and alcohol and the extra sugar and comp uh, processed starch we cough up a lot of phlegm that's the lungs trying to detox a, a, a lot of the mm -hmm. solid broken down bacteria that collected in our lungs and then within an hour of waking up what do we also do we have a bowel movement so everything we do initially is to detox the body first thing in the morning and if you can exercise in the morning you amp up that whole detox process and if you can do it in the presence of natural sunlight at the same time you bolster your vitamin d production now that's okay. everything other than eating health better that you can do on top of that you layer the healthy foods and then on top of that, you layer the supplements. You can't go wrong with all those three. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Really 
Wow. And also very quickly to add to that as well about the change, guys, very quickly. Understand something. I think I said this on one of the shows before. When we think about food and our life and our habits and what we do day to day, we think with our today brain, right? Mm -hmm. You're thinking with everything you've learned and known and experienced from as you up to the way you are today. That's the brain you're thinking with. You don't know the person you're going to be tomorrow. You've never met that person. Mm -hmm. And that person's mm -hmm. frightening, right? And this yeah. is going back to what I was saying about, you know, what's the, what's the old expression? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. There's only yeah. one way to get there, right? <laughs> To become that new person, you have to shed the skin of the person you are today. Dream mm -hmm. about the person you're going to be. Dream about the person Ooh. you want to be. You know, do you want to be old? All right, you might go and live in Jamaica or some island or Africa and you're just old in some village hut. <laughs> Everyone knows you. Yeah, that's the lady who used to live in England. Now she's come home to just live in the hut. Or do you want to be able to go down to the beach and roller skate and go to the shrubs and all them something there. You know what I'm trying to say to you? That pain starts What did you say to you? The shrubs. You know what I'm calling that? The shabine. Shabine. Yeah, we know, we know. We've never heard you know, of the Guys, I kid you not, I do this myself all the time. Shit. You never heard of the shrubs? <laughs> I get so right. about, you know, yeah, what I want to yeah. do tomorrow. And I realize that I'm not going to be the same person. No, Think about the person you want to be. If you got pain in your knees and your back and your eyes hurting and you, your digestive system and all, rare to tear, tear. List out all the problems you might have now, however small they are, and you want those to go away. You can't be the person you are today. You can't be the person. It's yeah. impossible. You have yeah. to become someone new. And it takes a little work. It takes a little change. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Yes, it's easy when you're younger. But listen, here's where we are. Yeah. Right now, if the world changed right now, if the electricity cut off right now and there was no hot water, You'd be washing from cold water in a bucket. You would have to do it. That's yeah. called adaptation. So adaptation. you need to adapt. Go on, Doctor. Yeah. Gonna... No, I was going to say mm -hmm. um, one thing. What I tell my patients and clients is: take off all the makeup, mm. take off all the extra stuff, get naked and look at yourself, and then give yourself an honest analysis of: all right, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Look at your face. See where you have wrinkles or you have dark marks you've got rings you've got you know what what whatever and say all right do i look healthy mm. Mm -mm. right mm. so and then remember you reap what you sow so if you are partaking in unhealthy activities you know smoking right a lot of a lot of us smoke weed and we think you know car the weed go upon king King Solomon grave it is 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 what something do you, that's what, good. Do you, what do you think put him in the grave? <laughs> it's probably anyway. Sorry, Un, no, unconfirmed. Was... Anyway, unconfirmed misinformation. Right, right. right? King, King Solomon's grave and all that. But a lot of us partake in that, and the moment you burn any substance and you inhale it, it's it's immediately a carcinogen. Right, immediately, carcinogens are endocrine disrupting chemicals. Right, so you are disrupting your body. So. You have to look, take an honest look, right? It's the naked truth. The naked truth. The naked truth, you know, the 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 um the, the lies are dressed in the clothes of the naked truth. Mm -hmm. Right? So all the stuff that we do to paper over the cracks, like you know, a lot of women out there, they look good, but when you dissect it and you take the layers off, like a peeling an onion. Right, there you go. And the, and the layers are fallacy. But it looks good. And this is where we start talking about naked, the naked truth, your health. Yeah. Strip everything off mm. and have a look at yourself. Yeah. And then make the decision. Make those... Because a lot of... You know, when we start talking about people who spend money, some people spend money trying to look the, yeah. good without... The work without Fixing putting internal, in, without yeah. without putting real in the talk, work. So, so, so the what, what do we what do we call them? The peripherals, the 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 supper, the, 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 the appendices, the, the, the appendix, the avatars, and right, the right. Peripherals All these the, things that are are put on us, we we don't we can't look. You know the guys. As, they, they, as they, men, they, they, we don't. As men, we don't wear makeup. Right, we, we don't. Your no, some men do wear makeup. Fuck that line. I got a little eyeliner right now. You know, it's subtle though. I don't I do them harsh. I just seen a blusher on 
I saw you lot with a makeup yeah. artist before. Yeah, some school. men wear makeup, yeah. yeah, some yeah. Are, some, whoever they are, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who those men are. But, you know, more more time, your average black man is not wearing no makeup. More time. So what you see is what In you get. Hands. It's kind of changing. It's kind of changing a little bit now, though. No, but it's again, changing now yeah, because that's the marketing and the shift in ideology. Like like you guys are in that league. Atlanta. I don't know. Reggie, you've got you a minor in it because... Atlanta are you is telling me of... that man, black man in London is wearing makeup? No. <laughs> yes. Is that what you're telling me? Atlanta yes. Is. Oh. <laughs> In England, that's well, London. In London. Atlanta, you're right. We we have we have we have you know we have a big gay community, and you know we can't speak for the gay men. We're talking heterosexual right now. We're yes, but about... the heterosexual ones are putting on the makeup. If they're not bleaching, I've seen, seen it. I ain't seen it. I have not seen it. Who's putting on the makeup? The fact of the matter is, if you wash your car and put 22 inch rims on it, but you don't change your oil. It's going to break down. Right. There you go. Yes. What we're saying is maintain your engine. Mm -hmm. Maintain the wheels, the tires, the brakes, all the cores, everything inside. Make sure the air quality inside the car is, is, is good because you'll win races. There's an old expression, a fool. They said a black man. A fool would rather look good and lose. So That's a right. lot of people would rather look good but be failing in health. As long as when they leave the house and they do the selfies, it looks good in the selfie. What Dr. Mm -hmm. Amsu is saying, I guess maybe what I hope everyone on this call believes and understands. Dr. Keeler says this all the time. And what I'm saying is, loud the selfie, loud the makeup for a second, loud the filter. Who are you really? Right. Are you truly healthy? Like truly healthy. Now, when you're truly healthy, A, you won't need makeup. And B, if you do put on makeup, now you're, you're, you're winning. Now you're slaying. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, guys, what I'm saying is we have to peel off those layers, the community, us people, peel off those layers and just talk true. Keep it 100, like real talk. Real talk. Are you truly healthy? Can you but look in the mirror and say, I am healthy? Go ahead, Kaz. Yeah, as you were saying okay. that, well, you know, well, that it's our teachings. When we're fighting against huh? the pharmaceutical oh, companies... Oh, and the Tom Kaz. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just out of I just thinking, boy, before I say, my name was Kaz, but Sparkle take over. Carry on, Sparkle. <laughs> and then we're going to end with the news. You let me lose the chair, man. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, no, what I was saying, yeah, but like you said, it's like the teachings. And, you know, we're fighting against the pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. the doctors that tell us one thing. And like, guys, um, gentlemen like yourselves and Dr. Khan, well, that's giving us all this information that, God, I wish we had it when I was younger. Sure, you know, yeah, my life would be a lot different, but when I'm looking at the young ones coming up behind us, I mean, you think I could be drinking a bottle of what Ray and Nephew just saw like that and just drinking it like his juice, like water, like the way these youngsters are doing it? And I'm just looking at some of these young girls, you know, they're having one child and they're looking like they've had 10. Right? And I have, it, I have, I have a so, brethren, yeah. I have a brethren, he's a very good friend of mine, a brethren. You know, what he does, he runs a funeral home. He's an undertaker. Yeah. Okay. One day I'll bring him here. You guys talk to him about who comes in on. He calls it his slab. So in his in the in so they have the funeral home at the front, but at the back is where they have the mortuary, and they have a slab, and that's where they prepare the bodies for embalming. For embalming Ask him yeah. who comes in there. It's not just old people, young yes, young people, young, young girls. Yeah. Yes, they're coming in like they're moving. Suicide. Yeah mental health issue, young yes. people, because of what you're talking about. Yeah. So part of what we do is raising the alarm and really talking to those people. We talk to the parents, hopefully they can infuse some sense into them. Some of them are gone because you think we've been marketed to. They have been marketed to on another level. Oh, we didn't have social level. media. We didn't yeah. have the music telling us something, an advert yeah. telling us something. And when you walk yeah. past the shop, your phone right. tells yeah. you the same All thing. Cookies. Yeah, maybe yeah. I do need to drink. It's, it's scary. It's yeah. scary. It's scary. We've I mean, kids walking the cars. Like, yeah. Do you remember when we, you cigar, you know, cigar was like the That's one the old big man, man thing. big, big man, big thing. man thing. Yeah. yeah now yeah. youths are not just smoking cigars. They're buying cigars, taking the, the, the cigar out and putting weed in. Oh my goodness. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what goes into cigars? Yes. They're, they're full in the, the cigar with weed. Philly Blunt. Is yeah. that not? Yeah. Philly, Philly Blunt. Blunt. If you take the, you yeah, use Philly a cigar Blunt. paper and put weed in the cigar yeah, paper. Philly Blunt. Yeah, cigars yeah, yeah. are the most carcinogenic. Some of those tobaccos, can remember, they, they put um, fragrances in cigars to give you that oak smell and all this well, kind of yes, stuff. Yes, so yes. a lot of cigars are more dangerous than cigarette. <laughs> That's what yeah. our kids are being um, marketed to. 
and how they're being marketed to and all these debates going now. You you guys, I don't want England's like, come to America, go to any like the hood and go to a petrol station. And what they do is they keep all the tobacco products behind the, the, the glass, right? And you want to see a war of, they call them cigarellos. So they're like sweet flavored um, fragrance cigars. And you get like two or three in a packet and they buy singles. Chewing tobacco. Chewing tobacco is not a big thing in the UK. I know there's some over there. It's like um, shag, right? Um, 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 rolling. But, roll, uh, but you know what's even worse than that now? It's the, the, the hookah. Oh my goodness. Hookah. Mm. Because hookah, there's no regulation on the, on the, on the tobacco, right? So you're getting unregulated tobacco and they smoke it for hours. Yeah, they sit For hours. Nice. They sit down and smoke. Like you have a cigarette, you got what is it, five minutes, six minutes to smoke a cigarette or whatever. With hookah, and it's you're out. basically chain smoking. You're sitting down for the whole night and you're just constantly smoking. And the vapes, let's not forget the vapes. Right. What they don't the tell e-cigarettes. you about the vapes is that e-cigarettes, not only is the um, tobacco they're using in there mostly unregulated if it's not it's the oils and another thing they don't tell you about is the filament ask yourself how does a vape work so what happens is there's a small um tungsten and uh um tungsten lithium i think um filament in there and what it does it gets hot really really quickly it's almost like striking a lighter but it's a metal it's a bimetallic strip every time it gets hot it releases particles those are the particles that are causing the lung disease and the lung seizures. collapses, seizures in kids. So the vape, there's the tobacco, there's the oil, then there's the actual metal filament that gets hot to release the tobacco. This is what our kids are doing now. So stuff we weren't even thinking about. So 100%. Well, this is what I'm saying. It's about the ad- okay. ad- um, education and how they advertise their, their, their products. Um, and it's That's like, even up. with yours, if you're coming guys, with something sorry, good sorry, to sorry, help sorry, us. We're gonna have to cut, guys, yeah. we're going to have to cut it now. Denise yeah. has got a question and that's it. It's a wrap because it is like right. a couple of minutes into two, um, two hours now. So, yeah. yeah. So Denise, do you want to ask the last question? And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah. So in regards to you was talking about the doctor was talking about dreams and self-transformation and, and feeling you're worth it. Um, oftentimes people's past and psychological trauma can can create, you know, that self-hate. Um, and that um, lack of self care, um, and and that's my that's my kind of life's work or inspiration. I'm a psychotherapist, mm-hmm. so I help to heal people to get them to a point where they believe that they are worth it, and so many changes just follows after that. Um, and I've also written a book, my own journey of um, tra- self transformation. I wanted to ask, what inspires you to to to, to be in this field? All right, that's all that I, I, I don't think there's don't, enough don't, time. Don't, 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 don't talk about it. I don't think there's enough time. Right. Oh, let me just say the short answer. Dr. Ams told us all the time. He told us from last um last episode about his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there you go. Okay, yeah. so okay. catch the replay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. but, but but I will say this though very quickly to answer that is I know I can speak for Dr. Amsu and this and probably Dr. Keeler as well because I've I've spoken to her and she's always on our calls and again guys please welcome Dr. Keeler, um she's part of our organization she's on our panel, um mm. she's a, a a trained medical doctor and you know also a nutritionist and a medical doctor from the I wouldn't say pharmaceutical world from someone who's trained in the allopathic world that understands, appreciates, and advocates for the natural world, right? So she's probably one of the most powerful people in our in our space because she has both sides. And she can tell you, you know, if you've ever heard of integrative medicine, right, where sometimes if it's stage five, you have to have surgery for this thing, right? Or you have to take some kind of medication for this thing. But on the journey there, you've done all the right natural things. And that's where Dr. Keeler comes in as well. And I just want to say that so the three of us, I believe, and Dr. Keeler, if I can speak for you, if you don't mind, is that, in our own experience of dealing with um, the Western world and pharmaceuticals and industrialized food and industrialized medicine and, and um, the water and the petrochemicals, we haven't even talked about the petrochemicals, about the chemicals that are in your home, toxins in your home. When we see all of these things and we see the effect it's having on our families, on our children, on our mothers, on our fathers and on our society in general, this is how we do something. Some people want to go and march and wear a T-shirt. Some people, you know, make some music. Whatever. This is what we do. You know, and we believe that that dinner table, do you remember that family unit? You know, people ask, what's the difference between now and the civil rights era? Go back and look. 
the difference between now and the civil rights era is we don't talk anymore. We don't communicate anymore. We don't tabernacle anymore. It's so funny we don't, how we, we don't talk. talk. We don't. We don't pray together. The community is being diminished, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, he's a Cliff Richard fan. Come on, I'll show you his office. He's got bare Cliff Richard posters in his office. <laughs> but we felt that this was the glue because with the health, it's truly wealth, and it's not to yeah. be cliche. We have seen it when people change their lives around, they start to do things that they never thought they could do. So yeah. this is our contribution um, to the overall movement. So. Thank you. And, you like and, also, then. and for those who are watching, you can also um, connect with um, that Dr. Amsu and Mr. Brates and Dr. Keela. Is it Keela? Keela? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, see, I said it. Praise the Lord, I got the pronunciation <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I will share the link so you can join them on Friday. It's um, is it 10 p.m. our time? Great. Um, yeah, yeah. It is. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Um, Eastern, GMT. Yeah. So it oh. will be in the description as well, so you can go there and you can ask as many questions. It goes all different directions to do with health. That is your go-to place every single Friday. Um, do also join us back with the doctors again on the 7th of December, where we're going to be talking about prostate cancer. So um, if there's any men out there that is actually watching and you are also going through prostate cancer or overcome, whatever, please do get in contact with us. Just send us a DM um, or just send an email to info at nowchatshow.co.uk. I will put that information in the description as well. We would love to hear from you and we will have a similar conversation to what we had this evening. Um, Mr. Briggs, you very, very listen, quickly. You very, very <laughs> quickly. This is good news. I'm actually about to bring the good word. This is this is my final sermon. All right. I've got to, I've been, got to good news. Um, we have a, so Thanksgiving happens out here in America and it's like our equivalent to, the English equivalent to like January sales, right? So every year we do something for this period because this is the holiday period. People eat the most, drink the most and fornicate and do all kind of madness, right? So we have a Thanksgiving sale. So right now, if you go to our site, it's thanks 35. 35. It's 35% off. Literally, you get, you get, you know, a whole third of the product. So thanks 35. I'll put that in the chat at checkout and it's a sale it's going to run through um thanksgiving probably to the end of the month so thanks 35. Right. so um, okay, cool. i'll put That's that in there thank, um, you. Yeah. thank you thank you thanks 35 and i hear it thanks 35. Yeah. Okay. all one word all right okay Oh, sent to the wrong person. All right. So that's the end of the show, everybody. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, panel, for coming on. And of course, thank you to the awesome doctors who's shared all their knowledge. Well, not all of it. They've shared a lot of their knowledge with us this evening. Let's see how many. It would be interesting to find out from you ladies who actually done a detox after this. Stop eating me. Yeah. We should do a challenge. We should do a challenge. Good challenge. I like it. Yeah. If you if you can if you can get twenty yeah. black men on that prostate call, I will. I, listen, you know how stubborn black men are, right? When they're not sick, one. but now when they got prostate and they're scared, hmm. on because they're scared for their life now. They, mm. they, they, black, a black, a scared black man is a conformist, mm -hmm. and we can, because we're black men, mm. we can go in on black men. How, how scared, scary black men are, right? Yeah. So, so what? I, I got cousins who had prostate issues. Knowing what I do, right? Didn't tell me. Mm. Scared. Run to the, run to the, you know, the default, and do it quietly. Where you know, because it's black men are ashamed of of issues with mm. urological issues, with their, anything to do with anywhere near their penis. There's a problem, they're not saying shit. They ain't telling nobody. Mm. So if you can get 20, mm. if you can get 10, I, I'm gonna I'm come on gonna get 10 black men, I'll be like, right. <laughs> Bruv, listen, I'm keeping it real.com. I've only got one so far and I've been on this mission mm -hmm. for like about four weeks. I've got one, okay? What about is, it, is, it, is it Elia, is it Derek? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> you know what? No, no, is watching this, I'm no, 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 no. What, what, what about if you try to reach partners of men who? Because I'm a partner of a man who's had prostate mm -hmm. and is. But we want to hear from the mouth, then, because that's the problem. 
We keep on going. So I don't know woman. if I'll be able to bring him on here, but I can come on here. Well, bring him, yeah, drag him. No, but you we need the man them to come on the show. We yeah. need them to come I'll try and work. I'll try and work on him. I'll see. Oh. <laughs> so can I say something real quick as well so here's the thing rather than so like menopause right the way the current world is with the food and everything we've talked about it's not if you're going to get it it's when and mm -hmm. the degrees of it you know some people mm -hmm. are going to get it worse than others but everyone is going to experience some degree and I say everybody it's not 100% it's, not, it's in the high 90s mm -hmm. it's at a point where I can generalise and feel cool about generalising tell your man it's going to happen and you want to avoid it, you need to be on this. Don't ask them if they got it. Don't, don't even try and you know, get into their pants. Just tell them what's going on. Because the truth of the fact is, it won't listen. they won't listen. But here's the thing. It's about the family. And the reason why we talked about, I know we're going to go longer, um, why it's so important about the family is because families don't talk anymore. Women don't tell their husbands and their kids when they're going through stuff. Husbands definitely don't tell their wives and their kids when they're going through stuff. Kids don't tell anybody anything anymore. They're just on their phones. A problem shared is a problem hard and not only that we can distribute that across the community you'll be surprised which one of your cousins had that same condition yeah. they can tell you exactly what they did and what you shouldn't do but you never said anything do you know what i mean yeah. so these conversations let's bring these conversations out that's why we give out the free link you know even our when you register for its call it's free we want as many people to come on as possible um to learn we do the, the youtube is free anyone can log on to the youtube um but people choose to go to the shrubs you know <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, but isn't yeah, it yeah. because it's a programming and it's almost like we're scared of our own people. So do you get what I'm saying? It's absolutely it's it's all to do with the mindset. Because yeah. even like gosh, I'm not even gonna talk about that because that's just gonna go into a naval conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be no, no, we don't trust each other. No, we need we to don't trust each other. Programming. Yeah, but like, we don't trust each other. Yeah. I said we need to talk about the deprogramming. Yeah, we have to yeah. have a deep I, I mean, I would love to have a Q&A with the doctors because personally, I think that a lot of the issues we have is to do with parasites and we need to detox from them because parasites in your body, they're making you do stuff that you wouldn't ordinarily do. You're feeding Thank you. parasites. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Absolutely. Really. Not a nice conversation, but it needs to be had. Yeah, no, we should do a week on that, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, should we do that next month? Maybe. Yes. Yeah. We can do it next month. It's relevant. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Everyone, can I just ask, is everyone coming on there? And also, can I just put this out there? Could everybody that's on the panel, could you bring one man that's got prostrate into the conversation on the 7th oh, of December? I've already got one. I'll try. I just know. give um, so <laughs> send, send me the link. Like, like, you know what's going to be funny, funny is ask trying to make that a conversation with a man, right? When you say, "Are you okay down, down, down there?" You, you know, and most <laughs> no, men no, know no, that, no, don't know that they got prostate yes. issues. They don't know because they don't go for checkups I, anyway. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know anybody with it. Yeah, but I've That's got right. that you're asking, you're I know okay. people who are nearly went, gone through it, and they nearly, they nearly passed, and they're well-known people as well. Right. And they, they what you're going to do is to tell them why Sorry? your prostate is going to kill you. Mm, why well, your prostate I mean, why is going to kill you. Why I think they may come on it, Sorry, Kaz, is because they've gone on Facebook to try and urge the bread, the man them, go mm -hmm. and get yourself checked. I'm here today to tell the tale and blah, blah. So that's wow. why I said I'm going to see if I can get them to come on this because they've gone on Facebook. I was mm -hmm. going to do the right, 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 right. 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 Come on this, yes. Yes. Then Sorry? come on here. Please, if they come if they've been on Facebook Live, then they'll definitely come on here. That's why I said I'm gonna check them and ask them, well, would you come? Because I think it's something for the amount of 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 of, of the man them that we've buried in the last two years over COVID with the prostrate thing, and it, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and those that are in like intensive care and fight through it. No, the, it's a it's, it's a real, conversation that needs real, to be had. It's because like because you're getting in relationships with somebody, and all of a sudden everything's hunky dory. Next minute, the man's telling you he's not feeling well. And next minute, you're hearing you're you're it's a man dribbling, and you're having to you know feed him and look after him. And you didn't go into that. You didn't expect that, but that's because he didn't take the time to actually look about himself or talk. Mm. Yeah, and another, I, you know? another thing, Kaz, that we can do as well is talk about um strokes. 
Yes. A lot of yes. people have strokes and they don't even know they had a stroke mm -hmm. until yes. they get the MRI and they're told, oh, you've had like, it looks like you've had multiple strokes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So what, we've got what other of topics. topics. We, so um, we've got stroke, we've got prostrate. What's another topic before we yeah. end? Um, women listening to their man more. Um, definitely that one. It's a big pandemic. <laughs> Perhaps panic stress. Another key one is, is, is weight loss, what right? What was Dr. Dr. Keeler? Oh, sorry, Dr. Keeler, go ahead. I was saying, it relates to what Mr. Larty was just saying. Chronic stress, it hits everything. Chronic stress. Yeah, chronic and stress, yeah. a lot of people chronic don't stress. recognize. Yes, yes, chronic stress, it throws off everything, every single system. And a lot of the aches and pains people have, they think is getting older. No, that is some chronic stress showing up in different parts of your body. Mm. And Doctor, there I never heard of. Do. I didn't hear a panic stress till. No, no, uh, no, chronic, chronic. 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 I didn't yeah. hear. A, I wasn't talk, told about that for until two weeks ago, and mm. as a trigger to the, my fibromyalgia, it's just the, the chronic stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. It, I'll just say this: and it triggers. Well, anytime something triggers, uh, cr chronic inflammation triggers chronic stress, and chronic stress triggers chronic it's inflammation. Chronic inflammation. Yep. And as a result, we have all these different names for things, but. You know, if you get chronic stress of your blood vessels, it's a stroke in the brain, a heart attack in the heart, um, yeah. mesenteric ischemia in the gut, priapism in the penis, and in the clitoris. Nobody talks about those. Yeah, mm -hmm. we definitely oh, need. Can, I, can I say something real quick? So, oh, um, so somebody just <laughs> Mag, Mag, Magdalene, right? Hey, just putting their hair off. And Doctor Doctor Keela, Doctor Keela is a specialist mm -hmm. in hair and skin. Yes, especially so she has good hair, good body, and it's all to do with um Don't, nutrition and, and um she she That's makes right. she makes she makes these formulas for the hair and skin very important. So when Mikey was talking her up, I thought you was gonna say that as well, but you didn't. Um, but that's what Doctor <laughs> Keeler does. All right, and um, this and I related. I relate it to, I relate, like I just am teaching a lesson right now um, this month about the relationship between skin and hair health and sexual health. A lot of people don't put it together, but they are related. You can't have one without the other. And it does relate to chronic stress, but you know, you, you don't want to throw everything at people. So what you do is you say, okay, what are you interested in? Like what you're doing as a host? And then I try to put something together for that. And I work with Dr. Amsu and Mr. Larty to, to share that information with their audience too. Okay, amazing. Well, if you can also just send me your social media hands on and then that way I can then um, pop it through onto the description. So guys, people that is catching on replay or those who are actually currently on the live, they can actually connect with you all individually. Um, Please tell me why do I sweat so furiously when I get vexed, even when passionately reasoning? Am I Stress. in the menopause also? Male oh, menopause. Gosh. Andropause. Men yeah, I don't think we can. Yeah, we've got to wrap yeah. up. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Kimani, you have to, you have to come yeah. on. Yeah, come on on Friday or something. Yeah. yeah come on Friday. Go on Friday. Show. Yeah, go on the yeah, show we'll, on Friday. We'll I'm going to put the link into the. Um, into the description of the show and you can connect with the doctors this coming Friday. If you're um, watching from the UK, it will be um, 10 p.m. GMT time this Friday. So you can ask your question there. So thank you everybody for joining the panel. Thank you all for watching right now. And those mm -hmm. who are catching a replay, we really appreciate you. Do spread this conversation with as many people as you can. We will be um, touching on um, other topics, health topics as such as stroke, prostate, chronic stress and hair loss, as we mentioned. And if you also um, have a topic that you would like us to discuss, do put into the comment. Please make sure you put into the comment after the show because it helps our algorithm and it lets us know who is our community so we can 
ensure that we continue to serve you. And next week, it will be Iola, myself, um, I think Tremaine, and we will be talking to the wonderful um, DJ Elaine. And um, for those who don't know about DJ Elaine, just Google her. In Elaine Smith, you'll find out all about her. And we're going to be um, talking to her about her, um, her past in terms of doing, um, being a DJ, presenter, radio presenter, and an upcoming event, which will be taking place on the 19th of November. So until Is next time, birthday, everybody... Yeah? yeah, it's the same day as me. Yeah. But yeah, those, who, those who know she's coming up. So are you not coming to my birthday? Hello. Sparkle, I, I... We're going to talk about this. We're talking about this. <laughs> Yeah. Princess, you know auntie's going to be there. You know your auntie's going to be there. Uh, okay. uh, as long as you know, you know because of what's been reported. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, all, right. Sure. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So until next time, everyone, peace out. Blessings. <laughs>